Hey guys and welcome to Toby Talks Tech. My name is in fact Toby and today we're going to talk some tech. In this video I want to talk about one of my recent purchases that I'm actually really happy about and that is the Blue Yeti USB microphone. The Blue Yeti microphone seems pretty popular on YouTube and for podcasts and in all sorts of other recording situations. It's a multi-pattern USB microphone. It's super easy to use. It's simple plug and play. So you simply connect the USB cable to your computer, select the Blue Yeti microphone as your input device and you're good to go. It doesn't require you to install any specific drivers, it works on Windows and on Mac as long as you have a free USB port. Under the hood, the Blue Yeti contains three condenser microphones that you can configure in a variety of different patterns to capture sounds in all sorts of different situations. It has four distinct polar patterns to choose from. There's stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid and bidirectional. At the bottom of the Yeti, instead of hairy feet, you will find a mini USB port a microphone jack and a standard threaded 5 8 of an inch microphone mount. On the front of the microphone you will find the volume knob for the headphones as well as a really convenient mute button so you can very very quickly turn on and off the microphone altogether. On the back you will find the selector for the polar pattern as well as a gain knob that allows you to control how sensitive the microphone is to sound. The Blue Yeti comes with a very solid, high quality metallic microphone stand. It holds the microphone really nice. You can also flip the microphone over for easier storage or traveling. However, it is pretty heavy. The capsule itself weighs 0.55 of a kilo, so it's about 1.2 pounds. And the stand itself is just over a kilo, that's about 2.2 pounds. So all up, you're looking at about 1.5 kilogram of microphone. So that's the specs of the Blue Yeti microphone. Let's talk about what all of that actually means in practice. First, let's talk about the polar patterns because it might be a bit confusing if you're not really familiar with the concept. Right now, I'm recording directly into the Blue Yeti using the cardioid pattern. That means that the microphone will only pick up sound that is directly in front of the microphone. It's trying to cut out most of the sound that happens behind it. Now, you can still hear it a little bit, but that's also because the sound actually reflects off the walls and comes in from the front. But primarily, it's just focused on the sound that's going directly into the microphone. So this is great for podcasts or recording YouTube tutorials, which is what I use it for. So really a clear sound just from the front. Let me switch it over to stereo mode. And so now what happens is that as I move around the capsule, you can see that my voice is moving from the left to the right channel. So the microphone actually just records the audio from both sides, the right and the left into the different audio channels. Let me switch it over to omnidirectional. So this is now omnidirectional and you'll immediately notice a whole lot more echo because now the microphone is configured to capture sound from all around it. And this is great for ambiences or concerts where you want to make the audience feel like they're right in the middle of it. So obviously you're getting sound from all around the microphone. You're also getting a lot of the echo. So this isn't really great for podcasting or anything like that. But if you just want to capture ambience environment, this is the perfect mode for you. Let's switch it back to cardioid. And immediately you can notice the sound is much clearer and it's much closer to just picking up my voice as I'm talking directly into it. However, quite often when you're doing a podcast, you may be interviewing someone. So there may be someone sitting on the other side of the microphone and right now. The microphone actually picks up very little sound from behind. It's mainly just towards the front. But if you change it to bi-directional, my voice is still nice and clear. But now the microphone also picks up the sound in the same pattern from the back. So if someone was sitting on the other side of the microphone, this would be great for an interview situation. This is now back to cardioid mode. This is how I record all of my tutorials just because it sounds a whole lot better. Now the Blue Yeti is super easy to use. I'm really happy that it's USB powered so it doesn't need any batteries. I don't need to charge up anything or change anything or plug it in elsewhere. Go straight into my computer, just select it from the drop down and I'm ready to go. So it's super easy to use, really like it for that. However, one thing to note is that I did have to switch the USB port that it uses with the USB port of my webcam because when I first plugged it in, they were kind of fighting for the same audio channels and the Blue Yeti would disconnect every now then so you may have to you know figure out which USB port will work best for this microphone. The other thing you may have to do as well if you do feel like you're capturing too much sound of what is going on in your room like a noisy laptop or neighbors mowing the lawn or rain on the roof you can lower the gain on the microphone and then just get a little bit closer in so you're more directly capturing just the sound that's going directly into the microphone. Do note though that as you get closer to the microphone plosives like explosive sounds that you do when you talk like B's, P's and T's they create a burst of air and if that burst of air hits the microphone directly that can create like tapping sounds and they can really disrupt your audio so you may want to get yourself a cheap pop filter and you can get these sounds off Amazon for around about 20 bucks. 
And talking of noise, while I really love the quality of the microphone, like it's a really solid build and the bass is nice and strong and firm on the table. One of the problems with this solid build is that if you're tapping on the table or even if I have a keyboard in front of me, I'm typing on that keyboard, all of those vibrations travel through the table, through the stand because it is so nice and solid and they all get captured by this microphone. Now there are a number of different ways to solve this. The cheapest way is simply to use some of this plastic bubble wrap that you can get at any mail shop, costs you like two, three dollars and just compare this. So this is with the stand directly on the table. If I simply take this plastic bubble wrap, fold that up a few times and put that under the stand. Now it's not going to be quite as stable anymore, but the vibrations aren't going into the stand and into the microphone anymore, or at least not as strongly. And so you can hardly hear this. This makes a huge difference. You can still hear it a little bit because obviously it's creating some sound that's, you know, bouncing around the room and is getting captured at the top of the microphone. But all of the vibrations are gone. So this is a super cheap solution. If you want something that is slightly more professional, especially if you do podcasts and you actually get people in to talk to you and you don't really want to show your plastic bubble wrap solution, there are quite a number of different options. And let me just quickly show you what I've personally got set up. This is the setup that I personally use. It probably looks a little bit fancier than the bubble wrap solution. What I have here, I have the Rode PS1 microphone arm. Costs around about 90 to 100 dollars on Amazon. The reason I like this arm is simply because it allows me to push the microphone off to the side when I'm not using it and just bring it in whenever I want to record a tutorial. I have it sitting on an aux phonic shock mount, which again on Amazon costs around about $20. You can get these shock mounts as well from Blue Yeti. They're called the Blue Yeti Radius and Radius 2 bit more expensive around the $60 mark or so, but I figured, you know, something cheap and plasticky, just preventing the vibrations traveling up that microphone arm into the microphone would be good enough. And if I tap, I'm not getting any of the vibrations on the microphone, which is great. Obviously still picking up a little bit of the audio, just like on my tutorials, you can usually hear the keyboard sound just a little bit because that sound is bouncing around the room anyway. Super cheap pop filter, costs about $20 on Amazon. Again, I'm going to put links to all of these things down below if you do want to check them out. Works really well. I'm really happy with this setup. Wasn't too crazy expensive and I'm getting great audio out of it. It's really easy to move in and out whenever I needed to record my tutorial. So overall, I am really happy with the Blue Yeti microphone. Once I've solved the vibration issue with the tapping and obviously my keyboard sounds for recording all of my tutorials, great audio quality, really nice and flexible. Once you've got everything adjusted with the microphone arm, makes it really nice and easy to push it to the side when I don't need it, just bring it in when I need to record a tutorial. It's definitely made my life a whole lot easier and I can really understand why so many people like it on YouTube and for podcasts and for all sorts of other audio situations. So if you are still in the market for a microphone, the Blue Yeti microphone is definitely an option worth considering. And that is all the tech I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.